Welcome to Games from Folk Tales, a podcast that mixes historical research and tabletop role-playing settings. I'm your host, Timothy Ferguson. This week, the magical realm is Minong's Jungle. If I were to say, unicorns have wings, you might reply, no, Timothy, that's Pegasus. Unicorns have horns. A third person, listening in, would agree with you. Unicorns have horns. Pegasi have wings. The problem is that there are no unicorns. So, how can the statement, unicorns have horns, be more true than the statement, unicorns have wings? This is called the empty name problem. And many months ago, I tried to script a podcast about how the accidental use of empty names is what causes spellcasting to fail in Ars Magica. You try to create a thing, and the thing doesn't exist, so your magical energy courses through you to stop you damaging the universe. There's a problem, though, and it's a couple of lines in Realms of Power Magic where it says that impossible objects can be brought back to the mortal realm from the dream part of the Realm of Magic. The example it gives is a living platinum peacock. This means that platinum peacocks are not real in the physical sense, but have the potential to be real, because they exist in supernormal space and can be drawn into the real world. Here we strike philosophy and have one of our regular info dumps. Minong was an Austrian philosopher who tried to work round the empty name problem by suggesting that there were no empty names. It gets a little weird, but if you want to know what the gears are doing when they're grinding far back in the magical realm, enigmatic seems to be inevitable. Minong believed that everything you thought about was an object, and that all objects exist in a sense, even though there are some objects which both exist and do not have material being. Those of you into linguistics will note that what he is doing here is redefining the word is so that it's not a binary switch. He is also taking liberties with the definition of the word object, and that matters to us in game because objects are targets. If you can broaden the class of objects, you can broaden the targets for spellcasting. Let's imagine his taxonomy of objects. First, let's discard nonsense. Minong defines nonsense as ideas so badly formed that they cannot be thought about or used to communicate anything. He gives examples like an ink blot whittled down from a piano. Nonsense does more than not exist. It's not an object. Objects to Minong exist ambivalently to their material state. That is, there are material objects, immaterial objects, and objects which are not definitively tied to either state. Nonsense is outside this framework. It doesn't just not exist materially. It's not just defined as non-existent. It goes further than that into a sort of utter negation. All objects, which is to say all things that can be meaningfully thought about, have a quality called absistence. They exist as such, which is why we can talk about them. Within the set of absistent objects is a smaller set, the subsistent objects, which in some sense might materially exist, and within this is a smaller set again, material objects. These three categories can be divided further, but let's make things easier by cutting out the simplest. Real objects. The phone on the desk in front of me is a real object. My phone, my desk, they exist, they subsist, they absist. In mythic Europe, existent objects litter the landscape because they are the landscape. They are complete objects, which means that all of their properties are known and describable, and in this case they're coherent. They are targeted by muto, perdo, rigo, and intelligo magic. One step away from this are objects which don't have material existence, but subsist. Menon calls these ideal objects, but they differ from the meaning of that term in Ars Magica, where we talk about platonic forms as ideal objects. Ideal objects are complete and have a material effect, but are not material. For example, my phone is a material object. That my phone is on the table in front of me is something I can think about and measure. So it's an object, a complete object. But the relation of the table to the phone, despite being in the material world, is not held in a single object I could pick up and call the state of my phone being on the table. In Ars Magica, if you're a theurgist, you may well be able to talk to these ideal objects, and arguably that's what you're doing when you cast spells, like rigor spells. 
when you make the branch of a tree whip around to harm your enemies, are you talking to the tree, or are you talking to the state of the universe defining the position of the branch? Arguably, the great spirits which touch the world through aspects are in this part of the magic realm. For Minong, numbers are in this category. That I have one phone rather than three phones is not a property of the phone, it's a state of affairs, which, because I can consider it, and it is material in a sense, is an ideal object. Hermetic magic can't deal with number save at the basis material level. You have more phones by adding more material objects, not by saying that, for example, the number of objects has changed. Let's use a folkloristic example. There are some quivers which are always full. How many arrows is there in a quiver that's always full? Let's say 20. That number doesn't change just because you pull arrows out. It is of the nature of the quiver that it always contains 20 arrows. Hermetic magic can simulate that by making new arrows when the old ones are taken out. But it can't define the quiver as innately always possessing arrows. Fairies can do this, by the way, which is why their props aren't objects. They are inherent properties of the glamour of the fairy. Having dealt with nonsense and material objects, and the states between material objects, it's time to head into the jungle, which is a joke at Minong's expense in the real world. The question posed to him was if unicorns, square circles, and mountains of gold exist, where do they exist? Minong's jungle is the answer given by detractors of his theory, but in Ars Magica we know that at least some of the inhabitants of the jungle are in the magic realm, so let's head in there and see if we can find viable spell targets. Let's break up the objects in the jungle. Some objects are defined as having non-being, that is, they are non-material. They are divided into two types, objects whose properties are not contradictory, and objects whose properties are contradictory. Let's look at the first one, which also divides into two types, complete and non-complete objects. As an example, I have a real phone on my desk. It's an HTC. The iPhone on my desk is, by comparison, not real. It doesn't, however, have any inherently contradictory properties, and its properties are known, complete, because we know what I mean when I say an iPhone. This little subsection is important because this is where Minong places the platonic forms, but only if the platonic forms aren't real. He leaves himself a loophole here, so that if it turns out that the Neoplatonists are right all along, and the material world is designed by emanations from the forms, they can be moved across into ideal objects and hang out with the numbers. That's where they land in Ars Magica, I believe, although that's arguable. Aristotle, for example, seems to. I'd argue you can make this class of objects with Creo magic. Even if you don't know all of the details, this object acts as the template for your magical powers to latch onto. This is why you don't need to know how many toenails there are on an elephant to create an elephant. You just need to know how to designate the object. You name it, or do the theurgic equivalent of pointing at it. The closest relative of the objects described above are the objects which have non-being, non-contradictory properties, and are incomplete. These are presupposed not to materially exist. That is, you can talk about them as if they were real, but they're never detailed enough or solid enough to be real. These are interesting to us because these are the things that people can bring back from the magical realm, but can't make with standard Creo magic. A living peacock made of platinum, for example, arguably doesn't have any inherently contradictory qualities, but there's no clear way of understanding how it works. It joins other things like perpetual motion machines and mountains of phones as things you can understand on their own terms, but can't comfortably slide into the workings of the world. Pause now in this clearing in the jungle and consider what we've seen. We've seen things that Creo magic can make. We've seen things Creo magic can't effectively make, but can be brought back from Dream, which is the magic realm. We've waved to Magi, trying to drag things from one side of that division to the other, by defining the incomplete objects to such a degree that they can be made by Creo magic in the mundane world. That's probably where rituals that summon dragons and similar things come from. People deliberately taking incomplete objects and making them complete by defining them. We stand at the edge of the shallow magic realm. We are about to head out into theoretical territory, where Creum and Magi strive to break the clockwork of the universe. Let's head out. The first set of objects we find are those that have contradictory properties. 
The round square is a particular favourite of people who come to the jungle. You can't bring a round square back from dream, but if you could it would be incredibly useful because geometry matters in magic and it would have the properties of both a square and a circle at the same time. From a play perspective, though, it's hard to see how, if you laid out a tower on a floor plan of rounded squares, you'd map it. That's cosmetic in-game because you can't grapple with it in any other way, and so it's enigmatic or impossible. It's here you'd find Magi and Twilight, they're human and not human, embodying a contradiction that precludes them from returning to the mortal realm. Further out, we reach the final class of objects. These are ambivalent about being, non-contradictory and incomplete. Here is the triangle, which is both not equilateral and not not equilateral, which to Minong is not the same as being equilateral. Remember, there is no binary is in his system. Here we find objects which are so well-defined they only have a single property, for example, being the colour yellow, without at the same time being the form of yellow, which is defined by its emanative relation to the material world. You can't bring these objects into the real world because they lack sufficient completeness to become embodied. So there was our deepest dive yet into the philosophy of names. I feel now we are getting somewhat closer to what hermetic magi are doing on a spiritual level when they point and jabber. See you next week. Oh, your saga may vary. We have a new catchphrase.